Our agenda for the next year, therefore, is to transform India in this direction. My budget proposals are therefore built on this transformative agenda with nine different pillars. They include, one, agriculture and family, farmers' welfare with a focus on doubling farmers' income in five years. Two, rural sector with emphasis on rural employment and infrastructure. Three, social sector including healthcare to cover all the under welfare and health services. Four, educational skills and job creation to make India a knowledge-based and productive society. Five, infrastructure and investment to enhance efficiency and quality of life. Six, financial sector reforms to bring transparency and stability. Seven, governance and ease of doing business to enable people to realize their full potential. Seven, eight, fiscal discipline, prudent management of government finances and delivery of benefits to the needy. Nine, tax reforms to reduce compliance burden with a faith in the citizenry. In each of these things, I shall outline specific policy measures and initiatives which would have a transformative impact on our economy and the lives of our people. Agriculture and farmers' welfare. Let me first take up agriculture and farmers' welfare. We are grateful to our farmers for being the backbone of the country's food security. We need to think beyond food security and give back to our farmers a sense of income security. Government will therefore reorient its interventions in the farm and non-farm sector to double the income of farmers by 2022. Our total allocation on agriculture and farmers' welfare is Rs 35,984 crores. We need to address issues of optimal utilization of our water resources, create new infrastructure for irrigation, conserve soil fertility with balanced use of fertilizer, and provide value addition and connectivity from farm to markets. Irrigation is critical for increasing agricultural production and productivity. Of the 141 million hectares of net cultivated area in the country, only 46% is covered with irrigation. The Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sisai Yojana has been strengthened and implemented in mission mode. 28.5 lakh hectares will be brought under irrigation under this scheme. Implementation of 89 irrigation pro projects under AIBP which will, has been languishing, will be fast-tracked. This will help us to irrigate 80.6 lakh hectares. These projects require rupees 17,000 crores next year and rupees 86,500 crores in the next five years. We will ensure that 23 of these projects are completed before 31st March 2017. A dedicated long-term irrigation fund will be created in Nabad with an initial corpus of about rupees 20,000 crores to achieve all these. A total provision of rupees 12,517 crore has been made through budgetary support and market borrowings in 2016-17. Simultaneously, a major program for sustainable management of the groundwater resources has been prepared with an estimated cost of Rs. 60,000 crores and proposed multilateral funding. At least 5 lakh farm ponds and dug wells in the rain-fed areas and 10 lakh compost pits for production of organic manure will be taken up by making productive use of allocations under MG Narega. The soil health card scheme is now being implemented with greater vigour. Through this, the farmer gets information about the nutrient level of the soil and can make a judicious use of fertilizer. The target to, is to cover all 14 crore farm holdings by March 2017. Rupees 368 crore has been provided for the national project of soil health and fertility. Besides, 2,000 model retail outlets of fertilizer companies will be provided with soil and seed testing facilities during the next three years. Fertilizer companies will also co-market city compost, which increases the efficacy of chemical fertilizer. A policy for conversion of city waste into compost has been approved by the government under the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. 
to increase crop yield in rain-fed areas, which account for nearly 55% of the country's arable land, organic farming is being promoted. Towards this end, the government has launched two important schemes, the Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana, which will bring 5 lakh acres under organic farming over a three-year period. Second, the government has launched a value chain organic farming scheme called the Organic Value Chain Development in the Northeastern Region. The emphasis is on value addition so that organic produce grown in these parts finds domestic and export market, a total provision of 412 crores has been made under these schemes. Incentives are being given for enhancement of pulses production. Rupees 500 crore under the National Food Security Mission has been assigned to pulses. The number of districts covered has been increased to 622. A national level competition will be held among 674 Krishi Vigyan Kendras with a total prize money of 50 lakhs to improve the efficiency and performance of these Kendras. Access to market is critical for farmers. The government is implementing a unified agricultural market scheme which envisages a common e-market platform that will be developed in selected 585 regulated wholesale markets. Amendment to the APMC acts of the states are a prerequisite to join this e-platform. I am happy to inform that 12 states have already amended their APMC acts and are ready to come on board. More states are expected to join this platform in the coming year. A unified agriculture market e-platform will be dedicated to the nation on the birthday of Dr. Baba Saab Ambedkar on 14th April this year. 97 lakh metric tons of storage capacity was added to the central pool stock during the current year. We are implementing the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana as never before. The scheme has suffered because of underfunding. The allocation in 2012-13 and 13-14 was only 8,885 and rupees 9,805 crores respectively. We have substantially increased the allocation in the last two years, which will now be allocated rupees 19,000 crores in 16-17. Ye jo 19,000 crore hai. This is only 60% of the cost because 40% states bear karenge. Together with the state share, totally about 27,000 crores will be spent on this yojana in 2016-17. Our goal is to advance the completion target of the program from 2021 to 2019 and connect the remaining 65,000 eligible habitations by constructing 2.23 lakh kilometers of roads. Accordingly, the pace of construction, which is, 100, is currently 100 kilometers per day, compared to an average of 73.5 kilometers between 11 and 14, which will be substantially now stepped up. To support farmers in the aftermath of natural calamities, government has revised the norms of assistance under the National Disaster Response Fund in April 2015. Special focus has been given to ensure adequate and timely flow of credit to the farmers against the target of 8.5 lakh crores in 2015-16. The target of agricultural credit in 16-17 will be an all-time high of rupees 9 lakh crores. To reduce, to reduce the burden of loan repayment on farmers, a provision of rupees 15,000 crores has been made in the budgetary estimates of 1617 towards interest subvention. The government has also provided a path-breaking crop insurance scheme, namely Prime Minister's Fasal Bhima Yojana. For effective implementation of the scheme, I have provided 5,500 crores in the budget of 1617. We have to ensure that the benefit of MSP yeah. reaches farmers in all parts of the Mr. country. Mr. Jaitley, if you want to, you can sit and then... Thank you, madam. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. We will have to ensure that the benefit of the MSP reaches the farmers in all parts of the country. Three specific initiatives will be taken up in 2016-17 for this. First, the remaining states will be encouraged to take up decentralized procurement. Second, an online procurement system will be undertaken through the Food Corporation of India. This will usher in transparency convenience to the farmers through a prior registration and monitoring of actual requirement. Third, effective arrangements have been made for pulses procurement. 
Farmers also take up other allied activities to supplement their farm income. To make dairy more remunerative to the farmers, four new projects will be taken up. First, the Pashudan Sanjeevani and Animal Welfare Wellness Program and a provision for the Animal Health Card, Nakul Swastha Patra. Second, an advanced breeding technology. Third, creation of e Prashudan Hut, an e marketing portal for connecting breeders and farmers. And fourth, a national geomic center for indigenous breeds. These projects will be implemented at a cost of rupees 850 crores over the next few years. There has been a visible rise in the yield of honey from an average of 18 to 20 kilometers per box per annum in the year 2013-14 to 25 kilograms per box per annum in 2015-16. The total production of honey in the country has been increased from 76150 metric tons uh, in 1415 to 86,500 metric tons. 90% of domestic honey is now exported.